perfect peace and love to everyone. This is Dominique Amelia here with you with High Potential Arts and Wellness. I'm excited to share with you today a video about referred pain. Today we will learn about referred pain, how to identify it, and how we can utilize it within yoga to help manage and alleviate the effects of referred pain. So a little backstory. Um, during the course of my undergraduate career at Texas Women's University in Denton, Texas, while obtaining my bachelor's in dance performance, I was able to live in a uh, meticulously renovated two-story apartment unit that had once served as a historical slave mansion. Um, and the second floor underneath me was a nurse major who had an elderly dog, um, and he kept getting out on a Sunday afternoon and multiple times. And I kept bringing him back in by waving him in. I'd wave him from the road and he would just follow me. And so the third time I went out to go again, wave him in and he ended up clamping on, biting my hands and just letting go and crying. Um, I knew he felt bad. He's an elderly dog, so um, and was adopted and potentially, to my understanding, what I was told, you know, had been really abused in his past home. So he was just triggered by something. Um, and so, long story short, I ended up um, finding that through yoga, I could not have pain anymore. I'm um, in my hands. Um, however, when I wouldn't practice consistently there would be a sensation that over time would get pain in my apex of my scapula. Um, and so in finding relief in my practice, it became true that there is a transformative power within the practice of yoga. And within the sacred realm of movement and introspection, I was able to discover a profound relief that echoed throughout the corridors of my being. And while studying anatomy one night at my favorite coffee shop, Jupiter House, right on the square in Denton, I was able to put together um, the nervous system, the neurological system structure. I placed it over a piece of paper, a laminated paper that had the muscular system. And I was looking at it with my expo markers and doing all this and that. And I was able to realize, oh my goodness, like, the same places that I was bit, you know, the pain that I have, it's correlating to the nerves. And um, so this became very fascinating to me. Um, and it's just so interesting to get to this point in life as an older adult now, um, and it still be relevant. Um, and so how this is important is because I believe that this also emphasizes how true it is that our body is all connected. Um, but it also gives example of how we have the opportunities and there are some tools that we can use to help us heal. And I think it's interesting to know that pain can move, shift, or radiate. Definitely click down below on the neuroscience link uh, to learn more about that there. Um, but this revelation that we're having now and that I had then, bears witness to the sacred truth that resonates with the human body and all of creation, I believe. That the there's an undefinable connectivity that weaves through our very existence with ourselves. And I mean, this doesn't demonstrate with nature, but I mean, come on. <laughs> and so I believe that it supports the definition as well of referred pain. And we're gonna go ahead and hop into that now. So what is referred pain? Well, referred pain is an intriguing phenomenon that occurs when a person experiences pain in a location that is distant from the actual source of the problem. If this is, if it is the discomfort that emanates from a different region of the body, seemingly unrelated to the underlying cause, this intricate interplay of sensory perception can be both bewildering, bewildering and fascinating. Within the intricate network of our nervous system, Sensory signals from various regions of the body converge and intertwine, creating a web of interconnected pathways. This is also known as our neural, our plexi, a group of plexi or plexus, 
the nervous plexi is what you'll hear them called, um, plural tense, because there's multiples of them. So it's the fabrication of web-like structures. I do this and go back here because it's like a web connection. And also in our hip area, in our hip region. And so this again is important because when an internal organ or deep structure becomes irritated or injured, the sensory nerves that innervate that specific area relay signals to the spine, no cord, and brain. However, due to the intricate nature of the nervous system, these signals can be misinterpreted and transmitted along neural pathways, leading to perception of pain in a seemingly unrelated area. Hence the term referred pain. So furthermore, the phenomenon of referred pain often follows discernible patterns with certain internal organs or structures exhibiting consistent referral patterns. For instance, a person experiencing a heart attack may not only feel pain in the chest, but can also perceive discomfort radiating down their left arm. You can find out more about that as well in the Hive link that's posted below the video. Similarly, irritation of the diaphragm, which is a dome-shaped muscle, right underneath our rib cage or kind of inside of it and it helps us to breathe and this can cause referred pain to the shoulder or upper abdomen so some common causes of referred pain are going to be again that of visceral organ dysfunction that's when pain uh referred pain arises from the dysfunction of an irration or internal organ Again, this would be regarding maybe a heart condition or a heart attack causing pain to go down the left arm. Um, muscle, muscular skeletal issues. This again would be problems uh, such as a muscle strain, trigger points, or joint dysfunction, um, which definitely occurred, you know, when I got bit by the dog. I mean, I got all sorts of that. And um, definitely it can result in referred pain. An example of this would be in the lower back um, due to it. Uh, irritation in the sciatic nerve um, and another commonly associated one is that of herniated discs or piriformis syndrome in which I would love to just cover a whole video on the piriformis because <laughs> uh, it's I really love it and I love learning new things and I love sharing important things and the piriformis is something that you can release and um, we should all be releasing it um, another common cause is that of nerve compression or irritation when nerves become compressed and trapped or inflamed they can generate pain that is referred to other areas of the body uh, such as carpal tunnel syndrome in which the median nerve in the wrist is compressed can cause pain and numbness and radiates the hand and fingers there's also spinal conditions these would be things um, experiences such as degenerative discs disease or spinal stenosis um, this would cause referred pain to go down the hips or down the legs, mimicking the symptoms of sciatica. There's also that of post-operative pain, and that's exactly what it sounds like, which is pain after surgery. And this can occur due to, due, uh, pardon me, due to disruption of nerve pathways during surgery, leading to altered pain perception. And referred pain can also be experienced from acute injuries, such as, you know, sprains, um, fractures, um, this can be, of course, due to the impact on the surrounding tissues and nerve pathways correlating to um, that of the topics mentioned earlier, such as nerve compression, for example. Um, and my favorite is that of a fun fact, which is brain freezes are a common cause. This is a great example because you're getting your freeze, actually, the pains in your mouth, but because of your vagus nerve, it's sending this pain to your brain so your brain is freezing um, and it's really important though to note that the patterns of referred pain can vary among individuals and thorough assessment by a healthcare professional is crucial for accurate diagnosis and appropriate management of the underlying condition so now we're gonna go ahead and take a step to check into the tools that can help you alleviate the effects and pain manage pain for referred pain. And so some of my favorite tools to help alleviate and manage referred pain are going to be, to start, that of gentle asanas. Gentle asanas are super great because they're low impact and they really help to cir promote circulation. Some, so some 
movements that you can utilize or asanas are going to be that of child's pose. And I'll lead us through a little flow here in which we'll start in a child's pose. And I really like to inhale and lift up with my head and exhale. And you'll feel a really nice stretch there in your scapula, your shoulder. Inhale and lift up and push into the ground, your arms. And exhale, lower. And on this third time, we're going to inhale and we're going to send our head all the way through this time. Inhaling and up, all the way up to upper dog. And we're going to exhale, we're going to wave through. And then now we're going to reverse that, we're going to retrograde. Inhale and we're going to exhale. Coming back. And here, we can go ahead and stay here. And we're going to take our left arm, we're going to bring it out to the side, and we're going to do a threading through. Letting our head rest, our left shoulder rest. And we're take, if we're ready, our right leg out to the side and our arm above our head. Letting some circumduction happen, opening up our heart. And we'll retrograde back. Doing it just very quickly to the other side. La, right arm out to the side, threading it through. Shoulder rests. Leg extends, left leg, left arm extends, circumduction, just some circles. And we'll bring it back to center, allowing for it to ground us down as we come back to center. Some other movements could be that of utilizing plow pose. And allowing our knees to come to our shoulders and pushing our arms into the ground. And exhaling to release. Um, those are some very nice gentle asanas I believe. Um, breath work is also very meaningful and I think that a really great use of a breath work technique is utilizing the ocean breath for helping with our scapula pain because that is the thing when we're utilizing these tools we want to make certain that we're correlating them to the areas of our of our pain so for example when we're doing our gentle asanas we want to focus on poses that target the affected area and adjacent regions helping to restore balance and reduce referred pain. We also want to, when we're doing breath awareness, we want to make certain that we're practicing deep diaphragmatic breathing and emphasizing a slow and steady exhalation because this promotes relaxation and that's what aids in the pain management. And it's really important to keep in mind that our mindset is everything. So mindfulness and meditation really can do a lot for helping alleviate and will not alleviate but manage pain more specifically um, and this is because we gain a deeper sense of self-awareness and it's honestly stepping into that and sitting in that that helps us alleviate the pain um, there's actually a tool called the balance app which will really help educate you in that and i really do encourage you to access that for homework and check out the pain tool that they have because it's actually really cool um, the next um, tool would be that of restorative yoga, which would be utilizing poses that help you focus in deep relaxation and stretching. I'm using, in using a tool, and so that's where my yoga block comes into play. And so in this matter, we would just take our block vertically, lay it down, and we lay down as we would in Savasana. However, we make sure that our block goes in between the, our scapula, our shoulder blades, and our arms are opened up, we can either have our knees um, long and extended, or we can bend them and have them to each other like magnets so that they're supporting each other with gravity. But this is just a really nice relaxation pose, and you can do some ocean breathing here, you can do some deep um, whiskey breaths here as well, which we'll cover in another video, okay? And so then to um, relieve yourself from there, you want to go ahead and gently roll over and just move it on and off from your side. And so then another um, tool would be that of yoga nidras, which are tools that help that help um, with um, guiding you for deep relaxation or sleep. This can help reduce pain perception and promote overall well-being. So I would just like to share to remember that it's important to always be mindful of your body and its limits. Always make certain that you're also consulting with a qualified professional um, in healthcare or in yoga. And who can provide, that way you can be provided with the proper guidance that's tailored for your specific condition. 
So just to review, today we learned, well, first I would like to say thank you for joining me, Dominique Amelia here with High Potential Arts and Wellness. We are super thankful for your time. Most certainly we'd like to recap that today we learned about what is referred pain, common causes of referred pain, and we also learned tools to help alleviate and manage referred pain. For homework, I would like to encourage you to access the Balance app. It's a super cool tool that actually helps specifically guide you based off of your intake answers upon sign up. So you answer these questions and you have a specialized meditation that's offered to you on like every occasion um, at whatever level you're at in your practice and it's super educational and I highly encourage you to check out the pain tool and the other one that is called oh goodness self-awareness oh wait pardon me no pain meditation and oh I think that is the one the pain meditation and body scan. Check out the body scan as well because the body scan really helps you get into reading your body and seeing where you're at and what you need to do to help yourself feel better. So definitely check out our references and the links below if you didn't see the first part of this video to learn more about some of the topics that were discussed in this video. Thank you so much again for joining us. Perfect peace and all the love to you in the world. Stay beautiful.